from chest to belly button, like Dave pointed out, it reduces their hip range. So it's much easier for you to just step over, okay? Uh, there are other ways to do um, mount entry, but it never hurts to practice that transition because getting to the mount is 90% of the problem. So that's, it's logical that we practice moving into that. Okay, so I've been doing my homework. I'm on the mount. I'm up here. I connect my feet. What I'm going to do is squirrel, uh, scroll, come into here. Okay, I want that. He defends by joining his hands or something. Yes, any way he wants. I don't care. I don't really want the arm. What I really wanted was this and get this choke fist in. Remember when you make a fist, the little finger starts, thumb closes, the wrist is straight. So what I'm going to do is put my thumb in deep and close and straighten. So thumb in deep, close and straighten. Okay. Now, even though he's defending, I don't really care anymore. But what I'm going to do is this arm comes down to his chest and up. See that? And then I'm going to take this hand underneath in like this. It almost goes on straight away. So as long as this is nice and deep, it gives you much better control of what's going on. Then I take it down to the chest. Because if I start to go straight, he can get his chin down or arm in. or Even if he puts this hand in, it doesn't matter if I go to the chest. You'll actually get a tap from the wrist pressure. Okay, so I come down to the chest and then I hook up and this hand, I don't even care about getting inside the gi sometimes. I'll just, if you have a look here, sit up just a sec. I'll just grab here in the fold of the gi. So we go this way. Here, looking for the arm. He defends the arm. I let him have the arm. I come down deep and I get a strong fist into his gi, as close to the label of his gi as possible. Okay, like that. Down to his chest. Then I keep that pressure and push up underneath Gus's chin. Sometimes in, in no gi, you don't have the gi, you can hook onto the shoulder, but that alone can be a good choke. Okay, and then this hand just comes underneath, grab here, and I pull this one, push that one. And I lie down towards the direction, top side hand, that's where my head goes. It's so strong, it's crazy. Okay, yes sir. Is, is that a blood choke or more of a paper cutter sort of thing? How does it feel? A bit of both. A bit of both, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you go across the neck, but it's also a blood choke. Because if I don't get across the neck or if he gets his chin down, I'm still going to be able to finish the blood choke. Yeah. Okay, so once again, the golden rule, if I want the neck, what do I attack? The arm. the arm, yes. So I actually want the neck. So he's defending. I'm going to go here. He defends that, and that gives me the choke as deep as I go. Even if he gets his hand back in quickly for a telephone defense, boom, that's okay. I'm going to use it anyway and drop down, and you'll get the pressure on the hand like that. Okay? Otherwise, another good thing you can do is if he gets that hand in and he's strong and it's in a good position, what I can do is I can actually go this side now with my thumb in, then release this one, wipe his hand off, and then come back the other way, okay? So that's a good way to do it too. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Is there defense? Yeah, there's always defense. Timing mostly. If I attack the arm and I go to here already, he gets that hand in. The way, what I do is I don't leave it in telephone. I do what's called the cox comb. So in karate we do this. So what I'll do is, so, you have your hand there. Now continually crawl your hand over your head. There, see that? And now he takes my grip off and then he can go back to defending and getting out of the mount. But the reality is some things are completely indefensible because of slow timing. Everything is defensible with good timing. So if your defense is faster than their attack, you get them every time. If their attack is faster than your defense, they'll get you every time. Would you say that's a rule generally instead of doing the telephone to climb all the way up? Or yes. That is the telephone the proper way, I think, anyway. I would never leave the telephone here. That's a good place to start. And as soon as their hand's there, that's when you start to crawl it up. But if I hear and their hand and I leave it there, it's a bit 
bit passive. I need to be more aggressive, clear that hand. 